Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture. He's Phil Chambers from What Culture. Revolution 2022 has just finished and we are here to tell you what went down. And what went down, Phil, was an absolutely sensational pay-per-view with some truly memorable spots, but a long one yet again. <laughs> yeah, there was 12 matches to get through, oh. including the pre-show. So let's just get right into it, speaking of that pre-show. Yes, I'll just quickly run you through the results of the uh, pre-show, uh, the kickoff, the buy-in, whatever you want to bloody call it. Layla Hirsch defeated Chris Statlander. Hook, of course, made QT Marshall look like a massive knobhead. And the House of Black, via some missed stuff, uh, defeated... Death Triangle featuring uh, Eric Redbeard, who of course uh, returns to AEW, I suppose, on Rampage this week. Yes, yeah. I have no idea what day it is right now. <laughs> anyway, on to the main card, which started with Eddie Kingston versus Chris Jericho. And the match, which started with Chris Jericho getting dropped right on his head. Yeah, and they kind of started as they meant to go on with this pay-per-view with a slight theme that ran through quite a lot of the matches of... People just kicking the absolute crap out of yep. each other. Uh, Eddie Kingston and Chris Jericho, they weren't holding back. There was a lot of suplexes in this match, a lot of dropping each other on the head, a lot of punches, a lot of kicks. Mm -hmm. Just a massive scrap, basically. Um, it was really good fun, though. Great stuff between the two of them. It ended uh, when Eddie Kingston hit Jericho with two of the spinning back fists um, and then got him in this like arm submission <laughs> thing. He had his head and he was just yanking his arm back until Jericho. Uh, tapped out and Eddie Kingston got the win and he didn't shake his hand afterwards he Jericho. did not yeah what a git what a bastard uh, then we got the uh, three way for the tag team titles Red Dragon Young Bucks and the champions Jurassic Express uh, and Jurassic Express retained in a match that if I tried to remember all the spots from it would take about 20 minutes yeah. probably last longer than the actual match itself it was just it was your typical Young Bucks title match, basically. They did bonkers stuff. Bobby Fish, Bobby Fish and, and Kyle O'Reilly went, we can do bonkers stuff as well. <laughs> and Jurassic Express, yeah, they went along for the ride as well. Eventually, it was Jurassic Express hitting the Jurassic Express on, I don't know, one of the Young Bucks. <laughs> it was all very close. Lots of sort of diving into breakup pinfalls. And the other Young Buck, uh, whoever that was, um, just could, didn't get there in time. So Jurassic Express retain the AEW Tag Team titles. Yeah, we will say it is quite late if we get anything wrong. We Sorry. do apologise, but it is five o'clock in the morning. Uh, we moved on then to the Face of the Revolution ladder match and another one where if we went through all of the spots in it, we'd be here all night. Obviously, it was absolute chaos. Um, uh, there's a great bit when all of the big powerhouse dudes, uh, Will Hobbs and Keith Lee and Wardlow were in the ring and then Orange Cassidy came in there with his hands in his pockets and just started kicking their knees. Uh, and then they all started scrapping and he tried to climb up their backs to try and get onto the thing. Um, there was a lot of people like holding up ladders whilst fighting and other people climbing yeah. on top of ladders to try and get up. Lots of sneaky stuff like that. There was a bit where Will Hobbs and Wardlow just pulled a ladder apart and then started battling each other with it on the ramp. And then to take out so like two of the big powerhouse guys, um, Will Hobbs and uh, Keith Lee, yeah. both got like smashed off the um, sort of the staging uh, through two tables that were down on the floor by the commentary desk. And this was after Orange Cassidy got yeeted. Yes, my God, Keith Lee threw him so far that uh, Christian and Ricky Starks couldn't catch him. There he goes. He was just too high, so he went splat on the outside. And then it all came down to the big finish where there was a ladder set up in the middle of the ring, another ladder between one of the rungs and the ropes, and we all knew it wasn't gonna end up pretty. Uh, Ricky Starks was up there, he was climbing to get to the top, and then in comes Wardlow, he jumped up to the top of the ladder, oh. and got Ricky Starks in a powerbomb, and then went to powerbomb him off the ladder, but then his foot kinda got caught in one of the rungs, so when he came down oh. on this other ladder, he was right down on the back of his head, it looked oh. absolutely nasty. Uh, but Wardlow climbed up to the top, he grabbed that big, Big Sonic ring, and he is your face of the revolution champion person, I guess, and he's gonna get that TNT title match, basically. Yeah, he gets the TNT title match after Scorpio Sky, yeah. um, who is gonna get a title match on Dynamite this coming week, I believe. I'm gonna mention this now, just in case I forget to mention it later on, because I'm worried <laughs> I'm going to. Isaiah Swerve Scott had oh, yeah. a uh, site official contract signing uh, and got a great reception from the fans who did the whole whose house 
Swerve's house. Uh, did I say Isaiah Swerve Scott again there? You did. Shane yeah. Strickland. Yeah. Swerve is, Strickland. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> He's got many. Swerve uh, is all elite officially, basically. I think we already knew that. We had a nice bit. Somewhere on this show, yeah. time has no meaning. In terms of matches, next we got the TBS Championship match. Uh, Tay Conti versus Jade Cargill. And Jade Cargill fought against the odds in a sort of babyface victory because, I mean, it's you know, it's Tay Conti it's fighting against Jay Cargill. Tay Conti's going to struggle against Jay Cargill. And so Anna Jay was out there clonking Jay Cargill with a chair whenever yeah. she got the opportunity. And also Anna Jay taking one of the worst bumps of the night. And think about the ground that covers on this show, <laughs> yeah. uh, where she got, I think, like, pump kicked yeah. and just went right into the side of the table. Like, right oh, the and there was some... Oh, there were some rough bumps on this show. Uh, but in the end, uh, despite Tay Conti's best efforts uh, and some incredibly uh, near falls for, for both competitors, it was uh, what you'd expect to take Jade Cargill to, I believe, 29 and 0 now. Yep. Uh, she hit Tay Conti with Jaded to get the 1 2 3. She retained the TBS championship. Yep, and then it was on to one of the big ones of the night. Oh. The best match in the night, uh, as far as. Five I'm stars, saying. Dave! <laughs> <laughs> Give it five stars. You'll get there eventually. It was CM Punk versus MJF in the dog collar match. And my word, this was spectacular. Right from the beginning, MJF had a new robe that had like Burberry and dogs on it. And he was wearing the green of um, uh, Valentine, Valentine yeah. in the original match. Uh, and then... Uh, there was a bit at the very beginning where Punk's music hit and then it changed into MJF music and he's oh, he's having a laugh with everyone. Uh, but then it kind of all went a little bit quiet for a while. And you they went, a you bit. popped huge for and this on the street. And then the din, 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 din thing of um, AFI's Miseria Contraire. Uh, obviously Punk's music back from Ring of Honor and things. He, oh. That hit. Uh, and the gear. And he had like, white gear oh. on. It was all so good. And he came out and it was, oh, it was absolutely epic. And God damn it, they had us right from the beginning and dragged us through. They kicked. Like I say, the crap out of each other. Uh, there was a lot of blood. Punk was. Well, I was worried for Punk early on. Punk was absolutely. I thought he'd done a Guerrero, Eddie Guerrero. Was it JBL he had him when that was Yes, just... that went a little bit too far. He, he one upped himself from Wednesday, let's say yes. that anyway. Uh, so he was dripping all over the place. There was loads of using the um, chains of things with whipping and pulling each other. It was like a classic old school. It was a bit more slow paced, but by God, it was brutal. And that it just one, built and I, built and built. I think it was once Punk got hit across the back and then yeah. there was just like this well you're saying like it, you could see the chain see the outline of the chain absolutely incredible hey and if, if that's not enough why don't we get some tax involved in this <laughs> um, what are they thinking <laughs> the rep you said at one point the referee went to counter pinball and was like oh. <laughs> he got one of the tax in his hand uh, the way they teased the tax as well oh it was so so good I highly recommend going to watch this if you haven't seen oh, it oh yeah um, seek it out it's very good but the finish came um, when MJF was kind of in control and he called out his I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> he called out his um, like client, I guess, or something. Uh, Wardlow to come out and give him that ring, that diamond ring. Uh, but Wardlow was there. Oh my god! Like, oh, where's the ring? I can't find it. Uh, which obviously caused a little bit of a distraction. Punk came in. He hit him with the GTS. Laid out MJF. And then he turned to Wardlow, and Wardlow was like, Ah, oh, it was in my back pocket all along. And he put the ring down, just on the ring apron, and he wandered off. Punk picked up the diamond ring, he punched MJF right in the face with Cheating. it. He <laughs> pinned him for the one, two, three. CM Punk beats MJF, and Wardlow's turn against uh, MJF. Finally seems like it's happening now that he's got this face of the revolution thing. <laughs> there will be words on Wednesday, <laughs> don't you worry about that. Yeah, technically still 2-1 to MJF, so uh, congratulations to the consolation, I suppose. Yeah, but, no, in all seriousness, like you say, Fantastic. match of the night? Yeah, I'd yeah, say so. Without really, question. Really, really good. And again, Dave, you should have done this before, but give MJF a five-star match. I know it doesn't matter, and At I don't really care about star ratings most of the time. I think it's a stupid argument people have online, but yeah. just as my argument is, why does Sammy Guevara have two belts? Why hasn't MJF got a five-star match from Dave Meltzer? Do you not like him or something? What's wrong with you? What's not to like about MJF? <laughs> uh, anyway, next up we had, oh God, I feel bad about this because yes. the crowd was absolutely dead at the start of this. Understandably exhausted by the dog collar match. 
but they're really not helping themselves when it comes to seemingly being relatively dismissive of the women's division, in my opinion, just because they went, right, follow that, girls. They put the women's title match out there next. Thunder Rosa challenging Britt Baker uh, for the AW Women's Championship. Eventually, the fans got into it. It wasn't quite the match or that we you know. We know these two match, these two can have. Maybe they were saving something for later on down the line because, in a bit of a surprise, I think mm -hmm. if there was any match on this sh on this show that we thought that's one going to have the is the one that's going to have the title change, I'd have put my money on, be on it being this one. Yeah. Um, but yet again, shenanigans from from Britt Baker. She had Rebel Reba. Uh, she had um, Jamie Hater at ringside. And they, get, they got involved on numerous occasions. They uh, distracted the referee when it looked like Thunder Rosa maybe had the match won. They allowed uh, foreign objects to be introduced. I mean, there was one spot where Thunder Rosa kicked out of that curb stomp thing of, of Britt Baker's onto the goddamn belt. The new belt, new by belt, by the way, yeah. which looks much better. So, and really shiny. <laughs> really you could tell how new that belt was. <laughs> um, she kicked out of the first curb stomp thing onto the belt. But later on, uh, again, after more shenanigans, more interference, where was Mercedes Martinez in all this? Um, Britt Baker stomps Thunder Rosa and pins her one, two, three to retain the AW Women's Championship. As a result of the results that we saw on this show, we are getting Layla Hirsch versus Thunder Rosa in a sort of championship qualifier, a knockout match. The winner of that goes to St. Patrick's Day Slam to face Britt Baker for the title. So hopefully they get to see the, the Thunder Rosa run it back with her. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, just a bit like, follow that. And uh, what a sandwich to be in. These. Yes, as if making them follow that wasn't it. <laughs> it was bad enough. They then put Moxley versus Brian Danielson on straight away afterwards. And another one of the best matches of the night. And another one where I'd just say they kicked the crap out of each other, yep. but in a very different way to the other ones, because they just brawled. They just brawled, there was punches, there was kicks, they were brawling all over the place. Eventually, obviously, both of them ended up bleeding, because of course they did. Moxley again, especially. <laughs> Moxley especially so. Uh, but what can I say about these two? Obviously, this was really, really good stuff. I'd highly recommend going to watch this one as well. Um, but the finish to it all came after lots and lots of brawling and just stomping. punching each other in the head and stomping and just like grabbing each other's arms and laying on their back, just stomping the <laughs> yeah. crap out of each other. Um, Brian Danielson was going into loads of submission moves and things like that, obviously, on Moxie. Got him down into one, but Moxie managed to sort of sneak over and flip out into a pinning combination. Well, that blood probably looped him <laughs> up a bit, <laughs> yeah. didn't it? Uh, Brian didn't quite realise what was going on. They counted the three, and Brian was not happy Ooh. afterwards. Moxie was kind of laying on the floor like, oh, I've won, but he does not look like he's won. And Brian was up com uh, complaining with the referee. And then Moxie and Brian obviously ended up getting in a bit of a fight because Brian was not happy, and they kept on punching. And then we got a big oh! shock of the evening. Because in comes William Regal, and he stormed his way down to the ring, yelled at them both, going, what the hell are you both doing? Slapped Moxley, slapped Daniel Bryan. A bit of juice on his face as well, <laughs> yeah. didn't he? You know, he saw that. <laughs> yeah, just rammed his head into him. Uh, and then forced them to basically kiss and make up and get shake hands. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention the Jay Cargill uh, um, take on him match. They kissed each other twice. Oh, yeah. Sorry, that just reminded me of it. <laughs> but yes, and then they sort of left together, I think... They're best friends now. <laughs> I guess. With William Regal, With like, forcing them to be best friends. Very interesting. So apologise to, to your brother. Going. But a huge pickup for wow. um, AEW with William Regal. A huge reaction for him as yes. well. Yeah, sensational Fantastic. stuff. Uh, right, time to calm things down before the main event. You know yeah. how it goes. Just, just come on, guys. A little bit of a break. Bring the crowd settle down. down. Settle down. Uh, Six-man tornado tag match. Uh, involving the AHFO, that's Andrade, um, Matt Hardy, and Isaiah Cassidy versus Sammy Guevara. Why well, has he got two belts? <laughs> only one TNT Championship, but let's not talk about that now. Darby Allen and Sting. Wow! <laughs> uh, right. Sting went through, uh, Butcher and Blade got involved in this at one point. They brawled all over the place, as always. They mad bumps for everyone. Yeah. Uh, Sammy Guevara landed on his head, I can think of it easily, at least twice. Yeah. Um, and took some rough bumps into railings. Darby Everyone Allen. Everyone got bin shots. Darby Allen did Darby Allen things, basically. Yeah. Uh, Darby Allen did a horrific look. You know that dive he does when he just, I'm just a bullet, just flies out of the ring. <laughs> Poor bloody Jose the assistant, or whatever his name Wearing is. a bin. Uh, yeah, he, he got, got beaten the crap out of. Uh, Andrade d just chucked some people about at some point. Um, but the key moment was when, how old is he? 62? Yep. 
62 year old Sting <laughs> leapt off, uh, they brawled through the crowd and went up somewhere and the Butcher and the Blade very kindly built a load of tables together. <laughs> uh, and this was after, sorry, forgot to mention, just prior to that, uh, Sammy Guevara and Isaiah Cassidy oh, climbed God, yeah. the stage and did a Spanish fly off the, the like entranceway bit through some more tables and we never saw Isaiah Cassidy again. Yeah. Hope he's were fine. And then Sting Mad was like, ball. hold my beer. Sting was like, I'll do that. <laughs> and he, uh, yeah, he jumped uh, through some tables to take out, I can't remember who's taking out, Matt Hardy? No. No, Andrade? Maybe Andrade, that might, might be Andrade. right there, yeah. Um, yeah, can't have been, because Hardy was going to yeah. be involved in a minute. So yeah, he, he jumped through a load of tables and they like, it was like a controlled explosion. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. It went down uh, and he was up for the end of it, so <laughs> good. Good for you, Sting. Mad bump though. Crazy. Uh, and then the finish saw, it looked like Matt Hardy was going to hit a twist of fate on a chair through Darby Allen, and Darby Allen had it wrapped around his neck and he just stood up out of it and ran at him. Because it's like, well, there's loads of pointy bits on a yeah. chair. So he knocks down Matt Hardy, takes him down, and then he's, whilst Matt Hardy is writhing around, uh, Darby Allen went to hit the coffin drop and sort of, I mean, the best thing I can say is maybe the back of his head hit Matt Hardy's hip, but it, it was all a bit, yeah. it's a bit of a shame. A bit. It was a bit of a shame because it, it was a, a bit of a botch because Hardy's still sort of writhing around, yeah. selling whatever had put him down, I can't remember exactly. And uh, Darby Allen did a mad old coffin drop, but just, yeah, just sort of bombed his head. But regardless, uh, Darby Allen to sneeze. No, nope, no, I'm not. Darby <laughs> Allen pinned Matt Hardy, and the Bonkers team won the tag match. And yeah. Oh, and prior to the match even starting, Darby Allen crashed a car through a caravan or oh, something. Oh yeah, that was a thing. That was a thing. That. And Sting and, and Sting a flamethrower. Flame main event time, Phil. <laughs> so, how the hell do you stand out in the main event on a card like this? Well, you just have a really good wrestling match, yep. don't you? That's it. Like, after you've had all the craziness, let's just have a good main event level wrestling match. And that's exactly what Adam Cole and Hangman Adam Page went out there and did. They kind of kept it simple as well. It's as simple, simple as, as you can, yeah. Inventing this goddamn pay-per-view was. Um, and just, yeah, went through what works. And it worked, amazingly, funnily enough. Um, Lots of kicking each other really hard in the head. Adam Cole went a little bit mad with the kicks. He was really gunning for uh, Hangman Page's head, and he got him quite Pretty a lot like of times. like a sparkly cactus or the cowboy rainbow stir. Yes, there was a little bit of uh, interference from Red Dragon. Obviously, they came out and they like set up a, a table on the outside that Adam Cole was gonna put Hangman Page through, but he didn't. He ended up hitting him with with the, um, dead eye. the dead eye through the table, off the apron, uh, and then um, all of the Dark Order came out and they started attacking Red Dragon and they all got them out of the way. Um, but then the finish kind of boiled down to um, Hangman Page hitting um, the, uh, whoa, what's it called? The lower the boom. Oh like yeah. He took his knee pad down, he'd taken out Adam Cole, he smashed him with lower the boom, then he hit him with the second bookshot lariat of the night, because he hit him with one earlier, but Adam Cole just got his oh. fingertips onto the ropes to get out of it. Uh, but he hit him with a second bookshot lariat and that was enough to keep him down. Um, but yeah, like I say, just a, a different match to everything that had come before it, just because they actually stuck yeah. to wrestling instead of just absolute bonk because batch yes. crazy stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was it was a mad way to end the show. Uh, and yeah, for a show that you were like, oh, follow that sort of thing, I thought it was a more than adequate conclusion. Yeah. Uh, Love what they did. Loved the whole show, really, to be honest. Like I say, it's exhausting watching AW pay-per-view, but it's only exhausting a, because it's so long, but also because you're like, oh, wipe me dry after basically every yeah. match. There's so, no break, because it's no. go, 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 go. Just madness. But yes, uh, Hangman Page retains the AEW World Championship, and he was good enough to shake Adam Cole's lifeless he hand, was. basically, uh, after the match. But yeah, a really sensational pay-per-view yet again from AEW. Um, uh, one of the best. Uh, I mean, there's an argument in the office now between Murray and Hamlet as to whether uh, Hamlet says it's the best paper you have ever put on, and I yeah. think Murray said all out probably just edges it. But yeah, the fact that it's up there it's in that there. rarefied, really, rarefied really, really air speaks volumes. Um, lots to go back and visit and rewatch, um, and we've probably missed a load of stuff, so we apologise. But it's the Don Callis was on the pre-show. <laughs> yes, yeah, they teased Kenny Omega and yeah. Don Callis came out, but. 
So much to talk about. We'll be breaking it down, obviously, in the next few days in the news on whatculture.com. And of course, Miller will be back later on today with ups and downs. Yeah. Probably more ups than downs, I'm going to guess, I'm gonna on this so, show. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Subscribe to What Culture Wrestling, wherever you get your podcasts from, for daily wrestling podcasts. Myself and Hamlet are going to go and discuss it right now in a little bit more detail. Uh, plus, you can let us know your thoughts on Twitter at What Culture WWE. Watch there, follow both of us. You can follow Phil Chambers at Phil My Chambers, and you can follow. Adam at Adam Wilborn. Follow us all at What Culture WWE. But for now, my thanks to Phil Chambers. Thank you for watching. Uh, this has been AW Revolution 2022. What went down? And we'll see you soon. Go and go in the bed. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>